This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. We're in Brooklyn. I'm joined by the legendary Ronnie Shields, of course, former trainer of uh, Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson. Now you're working with FA Jagba. You've worked with the best, as I just said. How good is FA? FA is, FA is really, really good. I think FA, right now, he's on the way to becoming one of the best heavyweight champions in the world. You know, he's getting all the experience he can right now. And once we make that step up, you know, we know we have to stay there. So right now, you know, our fight, our, our plan is to, to get, get rid of this guy on Saturday and then look for another fight real soon. And by next year, to fight top contenders. 25 years old, so still a young man. He's been blasting his way through people. Obviously, he had a, a tricky last fight where he got dropped. What did you say to him after the fight? How's he been since then? Well, you know, I told him, you know, you, you're fighting heavyweights. All these guys can punch. Every heavyweight can punch. I don't know heavyweights who can't punch. So he had a, lot, uh, a lack of focus, and he got hit with a shot and it went down. It didn't hurt him. He wasn't dazed at all. But he came back and he, and he knocked the guy out. So that was the most important thing. He learned that he has to keep his hands up. He can't just walk in on guys because he thinks he has them hurt. He has to, you know, stick with the game plan and, you know, and everything will be good. So, but, you know, he learned that and we had a great training camp. We really worked a lot on, on his focusing on everything that he does and now he's ready to go for Saturday. I don't want you to compare him in terms of his punching power to Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield. I'm not going to ask you that. I'm just going to ask you, how hard does F.A. Jagba hit? You've worked with a lot of heavyweights. How hard does he punch? He punches really hard. This guy, you know, I've worked with some of the best punches in, in boxing. No, I've never had a problem with my shoulders or anything until I start working with F.A. You know, this guy, he can punch with both hands. And Saturday night, you're going to see that. Of course, you have to match him properly and give him his time to develop. But if he was to go in this Saturday against uh, Deontay Wilder, against an Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, you'd fancy his chances? Oh, without a doubt. You know, look, the, the guy has a long reach, number one. He has a really good jab, number two. And the right hand is just overpowering. So all he has to do is touch you. And you go see Saturday night. He's considered as one of the best prospects in the heavyweight division. We've also got someone in the UK called Daniel Dubois. Have you seen much of Daniel Ronnie? Absolutely, absolutely. Right in. Daniel, I love this guy. He's a really, really good fighter, you know. And I say to myself all the time that they're on a the on a collision course. Definitely on a collision course. You know, it's it's going to be a race for the title. So, but one day these guys are going to fight. And it's going to be an Ali Frazier type fight. Wow, that's a big statement. But uh, I think you're right. I think when they do fight, it should be for a world title. And I think they'll both win world titles. Uh, I don't see anyone else kind of at their age doing the things out at the moment. In terms of the guys at the top, what do you make of Deontay Wilder's loss to Tyson Fury, Ronnie? Well, you know, I think Tyson Fury had a plan coming in. Deontay didn't. And, you know... You, you can't take anything away from Fury because Fury fought the fight that he was supposed to fight. You know, he's, he used his weight, he used his reach, he used his, he used everything that you can possibly put into a fighter for that night. And he just overwhelmed Wilder and, you know, he fought a smart fight and he won. We know Wilder's going to activate that third fight. He, he's blamed the costume for the reason he lost. What did you make of that comment, Ronnie? Well, you know, anytime a fighter makes excuses, it's, it's what it is, an excuse. You know, because in his heart, in his mind, he don't believe that Tyson Fury could beat him. And so you got to look at something. But I think he just needs to look at himself and say, you know what? When I put that costume on, if it was that heavy, take it off. Simple as that. That's just simple logic. Okay? So that's the costume wasn't the fault. It was his own fault. You know, maybe things didn't go well in training or whatever. I mean, I don't know. But he didn't look like himself even from the very beginning. So maybe he didn't have a good camp. Maybe he wasn't feeling well, whatever. But you can't make excuses, you know. 
you're fighting for the heavyweight championship of the world, you don't make excuses. What you do is you take the loss and you come back to live to fight another day. Someone who didn't make excuses was Anthony Joshua when he lost to Ruiz. Obviously, he came back and got his titles uh, again. How do you assess him as a fight? Also, Dylan White we've got in the UK. How do you rate those guys, Ronnie? I rate those guys very high, man. But I think what Anthony Joshua did when he lost to Ruiz, hey, I lost a fight. Okay, I know I can rebound. I feel in my heart that I'm better. Maybe I didn't do some things, you know, in the first fight that I was supposed to do. And maybe, you know, when I go back, I'm going to look at it again, reassess, and then come back. And that's what he did. He, re he reassessed. He came back, and he came back bigger and stronger and faster. And he boxed. But, you know, and he did what he was supposed to do. When you make the adjustments, Wilder has to make the adjustments too. But the crazy thing about it is, Wilder shouldn't go right back in in July and fight Tyson Fury. It just doesn't make sense because there's two different fights happening. You know, he should go, let them take a step to step aside money, let Fury fight Joshua, fight another, take another fight, see where you're at in your career see how you feel coming back off a loss, and then say, you know what, I'm going to fight the winner of Fury Joshua. Okay. Well, listen, Ronnie, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Best of luck with FA against Rosvan Kajano at the Barclays this Saturday, and uh, hopefully people will look back at this interview one day when FA and Daniel fight for the World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, we said it here first, all right? Absolutely, and to trust me, we're looking forward to that fight one day because I think it'll be one of the best heavyweight fights ever. Well, okay, Ronnie Shields, thank you very much for your time and I said best of luck on Saturday with FA. Thank you.